Hey, what's up guys, David here from Dignitin. Today, I want to show you how to set up a Chromebook. All right, let's get into it. All right, so with me here is a Galaxy Chromebook Go that I bought for about $300 from Amazon. And it's what I'm going to be using to show you how to set up a Chromebook. The setup process is pretty simple and straightforward, but I'll be showing you some of the ropes and you know how you can get around it. All right, let's start with the unboxing. I'm just going to unbox my Galaxy Chromebook Go here. And here it is. I absolutely love the packaging. It's super minimalistic. It comes with a USB Type-C charger. Pretty much every Chromebook is charged by USB-C, all right? So I'm just going to plug it in here. My Chromebook here has a USB airport and two USB-C ports. And either of the USB-C ports can be used to charge the Chromebook. All right, so I'm just going to power it on here. There is a little power button on the keyboard right here. And it's what I'm going to press to start my Chromebook. And as soon as you start it, the booter process is super fast since the Chromebooks are powered by either solid state drives or flash storage. Okay, so let's tap on get started here. All right. Yeah, it will ask if I want to turn on Chromevox. If you have some kind of eyesight problems, then you can turn this on, okay? So I'm going to disable that for now. All right, the next thing you'll be asked is to connect your Chromebook to a Wi-Fi network. Now remember that Chromebooks need internet to operate for most of their functions. So I'm going to connect it to my Wi-Fi, but if you don't have Wi-Fi, then you can always use like your mobile hotspot or something like that. Okay, just accept the Google Terms and Conditions, all right? It's going to check for updates, and if everything checks out, the next thing is it's going to ask you who is going to use the Chromebook. Is it you, an adult, or is it set up for a child? I'm just going to select you or an adult in this case, okay? But if you're setting it up for a child, then the configurations and settings are set up for a child. Okay, so let's keep going. All right, then you'll be asked to sign into your Chromebook. And the way you do that is you need a Google account or a Gmail account. That is really important. So if you don't have a Gmail account, you may have to create one before you proceed. All right. So I'm just going to go through the sign in process of a typical Google account or Gmail account. So since mine has two factor authentication, I'll have to uh, use my smartphone to continue with the setup process. All right, we are successfully signed in and here you can choose to sync your bookmarks or history passwords and so forth with your Chromebook. So this is a Google device and you can benefit from the synchronization of your data across the Google ecosystem. So definitely I'm going to accept and continue for this. Okay. And here you can accept the Google Play apps and services terms and conditions. When you install apps, you're going to be installing them from the Google Play Store. So those are basically all Android applications customized for Chromebook can be installed on your Chromebook. Okay. And now you can also set up the Google Voice Assistant. I'm just going to skip that for now. And you can now connect your phone or your Android phone to your Chromebook so that there's a seamless integration between your Chromebook and your Android phone. You can do things like copy files or move files between your Android phone and your Chromebook using things like nearby share. You can save Wi-Fi passwords and so forth between your phone and your Chromebook. So there's a whole seamless experience if you connect your Android phone to your Chromebook. All right, so I'm going to accept for the benefit of convenience. And now we are all set right so here we are we are all set you will have a welcome screen here which has a number of guides and articles on how to use your chromebook you know it will show you how to install apps how to find and organize apps how to manage your files and so forth you can see what is new based on the latest version of chrome os 
and you can tap on help here which is again a series of articles and guides and how to's on how you can actually use your chromebook so this is really helpful documentation for people who are new to the platform who are new to chrome os you can definitely read through all that content and you know get yourself well versed with chrome os all right so the first thing that i usually do when i get a chromebook is to check for the latest updates and the way you do that is you click on this gear icon which is settings and then you scroll down here to about chrome os and then you can check the version that comes with the chromebook for my case it's version 92 which is pretty dated because the latest version is 117 so this is like two three years back so i'm just going to check for updates remember every chromebook is supported for about eight to ten years from the day of manufacture not the day of purchase that's really important to know so make sure that the chromebook that you bought is not very dated when it was made otherwise you may get a chromebook which has reached its expiry date and it can get updates so that's really important and that's typical of very very cheap chromebooks yeah so if a chromebook is super cheap like below hundred dollars make sure that uh, it hasn't passed its expiry date all right so once it has updated you restart the chromebook okay and then log in with your gmail password remember the way we sign in is using our gmail password or google account for that matter but you can change this to using a pin or you can also enable smart unlock where you unlock your chromebook using your smartphone for example without really necessarily entering passwords all the time right all right so i've updated my chromebook to the latest version of chrome os which is 117 as of october 2023 and this version comes with material U, ui language here if you updated your phone to android 13 or 14 you can actually see the same material U, ui language on your phone and it's the same language that google has brought to its chromebooks yeah so it's super slick i think it's quite colorful and you can definitely enjoy it it's now available to all chromebooks if you update to the latest version of chrome os which is 117 all right so every chromebook comes with a file app and this is the file explorer which you can use to navigate your files and folders it also syncs with uh, google drive so you can sync your files between your chromebook and your google drive for example which is pretty neat then you also have offline access here so you can choose to have some files available offline so that when you don't have internet or you have a spotty connection you can continue working normally on your chromebook so this is the file app it's really pretty neat you can select files delete files rename folders organize files into folders you can zip files you can do pretty much everything that a typical file manager should be able to do on a computer okay and then of course central to the chrome os experience is the chrome browser itself and this is 90 percent what you're going to be using on your chromebook you'll be using it to access mostly web services from google facebook Twitter or X and so many other service providers, right? Yeah, so the Chrome browser is very central and you only have one option, which is the Chrome browser. You typically can't install any other browser unless you install Linux from developer options and you can install something like Firefox, for example. Otherwise, you're stuck with the Chrome browser here. And then the other thing is the Google Play Store. This is typically where you're going to download apps that you're going to use on your Chromebook. And the Google Play Store is the same Google Play Store you access from your Android phone or tablet. And so you have all Android applications available on your Chromebook. But of course, not all applications are customized for Chromebook because by default, these applications are designed for small screens, which are your smartphones, but they are not really customized for the Chromebook. So theoretically, you have access to over a million apps, but not all of them are going to work really well with your Chromebook some of them are really pretty customized for the chromebook for example spotify and a whole suite of uh, google products they are customized for bigger screen but not everything is right 
So I have, for example, Calva here, I have Spotify here that I have on my Chromebook already installed. Yeah, then you can also use YouTube from the Chrome browser. I have Telegram here, which I use for communication. Okay. All right. So let's just look into the settings here of your Chromebook. You have network and this is where you have your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. Here you can choose to connect to a Wi-Fi network or you can choose to connect to Bluetooth devices. Okay. And then you have connected devices here. So you can choose to sync or connect your Android phone with your Chromebook. You have accounts here so you can, you know, have multiple Gmail accounts on your Chromebook. You can personalize your Chromebook, change things like wallpaper and screensaver. You have uh, integration with uh, Google Search and Assistant. You have files here where you can sync your Google Drive with file app on the Chromebook. You also have printers, typical things that a typical computer should have. You have developer settings here. So this is where you can turn on Linux developer environment and you can install uh, Linux applications on your Chromebook. And then you have uh, reset settings. You can factory reset your Chromebook to factory defaults if you choose to, right? Okay, so a quick walkthrough here. One of the most important UI sections of a Chromebook is the system tray located on the bottom right corner here and you have time and date. Okay, so when you click on time here, you will have access to the Wi-Fi network that you connected to you will see whether Bluetooth is turned on or off and also the Bluetooth devices that are connected to your Chromebook, VPN access here, you have screencasting options here, volume where you can reduce or increase volume, brightness where you can increase or reduce brightness and of course powering on and off your Chromebook, the power button is right here okay then you have the calendar integration okay so this is actually integrated with a google calendar here so when you tap on a specific date then you can choose to open it in google calendar and maybe you can add a, uh, an event or something like that all right then you have notifications here so actually you can have notifications on your android phone appear here then you have the tot tool here which shows your recent photos from your Android phone. You can see the recent Chrome tabs open on your Android phone appear here. You can turn on your smartphone's hotspot here, silence your phone, locate your phone and so forth. So this appears only if you have integrated your Android phone with your Chromebook. Right. So that is really a basic walkthrough of a new Chromebook. So there's a lot of customizations and settings and applications that you can now install on your Chromebook. I've done a number of videos and I'll share the playlist in the description below. So you can go through all the tips and tricks of Chrome OS if you're new to the platform. All right, so this uh, brings us to the end of our video on how to set up a new Chromebook. If you liked this video, go ahead and click like, subscribe to the channel and ring the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next one.